The European Space Agency's ERS-2 satellite will soon re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and burn up. This is a result of the deorbiting maneuvers that were carried out on the satellite in 2011 as part of ESA's Space Debris Mitigation Objective. To find out more, I spoke to Quanta Verspiera, who is a senior expert on space debris policy at the European Space Agency. I started by asking him, what is space debris and why is it a matter of concern? Space debris are all man-made objects that were launched in space, as well as the fragment of this object. So they could be satellites, part of rockets, or their fragments. In space, a debris orbits at a very high speed. In low Earth orbits, debris have a speed of around 30,000 km per hour. So even for a debris of one centimeter, when it collides with a satellite or hopefully not with the International Space Station, it has an energy at impact that is equivalent to an, to an exploding hand grenade. So in space, we are able to track around 35,000 objects bigger than 10 centimeters. However, from statistic modeling, we know that there are approximately a million objects from 1 to 10 centimeter and 130 million from 1 millimeter to 1 centimeter. So it's 1 million flying hand grenades in space. Against this backdrop, what is the significance of the ERS-2 satellite's re-entry? So ERS-2 is a beautiful symbol. It's one of the legacy satellites of the European Space Agency a great Earth observation satellite, but which was designed in the 90s at a time when the European Space Agency didn't have any specific standard for debris prevention applicable to its missions. So ERS-2 didn't have to comply with any specific practice. However, at the end of its mission in 2011, ESA decided to show the example and to apply not the standard when the satellite was designed, but the standard at the time of the end of mission. And ERS-2 was passivated, meaning that all sources of energy in the satellite were depleted to avoid accidental explosion and then a lot of fragmentation debris. And it was moved to a much lower orbit, ensuring that it would re-enter the atmosphere and burn within 12 to 15 years. How different is it from the assisted... Uh re-entry of EOLIS satellite. So EOLIS and ERS-2 share this situation, which is that they were designed before we had strict debris prevention standard. While ERS-2 enters the atmosphere fully uncontrolled, in the case of EOLIS, we were able, because the satellite is designed differently, to implement what we call an assisted re-entry, which was really not planned in the design. And this assisted re-entry means that through a few maneuvers, we can reduce the risk on ground by controlling a bit more where the satellite would re-enter. So it's not a fully controlled re-entry, but we can dramatically reduce the risk by uh, making a few maneuvers. And where do we stand in terms of technology and policy as far as space debris prevention is concerned? So there are two ways to avoid the problem of space debris. Generating less debris and removing existing debris, debris mitigation and debris remediation. ESA is a world leader on these topics with its space safety program. Since 2019, our member states invested 1.2 billion euros. And we are developing technologies that cover the full spectrum of what is needed for debris prevention and remediation. Characterization of, of debris, following the debris, studying re-entry, removing debris, collision avoidance. We really cover all elements to ensure that debris will not be a problem. More than that, ESA is implementing what we call a zero debris approach, which is a strong commitment with a simple principle. All ESA missions entering design phase after 2030 will leave no debris in orbit. This commitment was welcomed and encouraged by our member state at the ministerial conference of 2022, but they asked us to go beyond, not just to show the example, but to empower the rest of the community in Europe and in the world to do the same. For that, at the Paris Air Show last year, we launched the Zero Debris Charter Initiative, 
with more than 40 very engaged partners, we co-drafted the Zero Debris Charter, which is the most ambitious vision of space sustainability for 2030, around five technical, precise, and bold targets. Now we are working with the Zero Debris community to make the vision of the Charter a reality and to make sure that we will achieve a Zero Debris future by 2030.